Hello and welcome to the next upload from Legoland Malaysia and today it is all about Ninjago. Now it's not the biggest of sections compared to all the other parks but it still packs a punch. But what's really nice about Legoland Malaysia is just how wide the paths are. So as you go from one zone to another, because there's literally a zone to my right hand side and then as we spin around you'll see just how close the next zone is but look how wide that path is. So you're never going to bounce into each other, you're never going to bump into each other, it's absolutely fine. If you think how tight it is just outside the Ninjago bit at Windsor, it is night and day with regards to just how they've utilised the space differently and obviously it is what it is depending on what park and how they have to do things. But there is your normal bits and pieces here you've got all of the bits and pieces with the guys you meet and greet with woo woo is lingering around somewhere and then you obviously have all of the other models as well now the one difference i think at this land here is you've got this sign so this sign just lets you know about the different activities that you can do when you're waiting to play the game so obviously you can just go around and go on the rock climbing wall and all those different bits and pieces. Now, Billund, they will have a laser maze. So they've got Lloyd's laser maze. They've got a rock climbing wall and they obviously have the main ride itself. Windsor has this ride and another ride built within that land, as does one in America as well. But here is not so much. You've only got the one ride, but it does feel really wide so if you had lots and lots of people in here and they're all to the outer edge you could quite easily just walk on the ride and back off again and it wouldn't matter at all and you can see you've got the big dragon just up top now at one point the doors of this were closed so i didn't think i'd be able to get on it and then as i come round and start filming it all up you saw those two people walking in and i thought oh, they're just going to get turned around by a member of staff it was all open so i did actually manage to get on this one and again this one is slightly different to the other ones that i've been on with regards to just the screens and things like that so obviously they can change the screens ever so slightly but i don't know how many versions of the game as such that they've got now the one thing about this section of the park compared to everything else it is the only section of the park that looks like it's been weather battered so you can see just how faded some of these models are compared to the rest of the park so it'll be very very interesting to see if this is next on the list because they do schedule maintenance on the website and they make it very very clear what month over the year is something is going to be closed and like the miniland for example they had a huge amount of changes in the miniland they ripped some stuff out they put brand new stuff in which i was happy to see because i think it had only been in there a short period of time but the ninjago section is the only section in this whole park that just looked a little bit weather worn but apart from that it was still super super clean everything worked fine you got plenty of seating you can see for yourself just how clean it is and how much space there is as you wrap around and the important thing the amount of shade as well because the sun very 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 hot there was a weather warning in place for abnormally hot weather temperature and of course it would be the day that i'm walking around so you tried to keep cool as best you could put loads of fluid on and but the second you stepped out into that sun you knew that you were in very very hot weather but the nice thing is there were so many places just to sit down grab a drink and go in the shade everybody was making the most of it now i didn't know how far through i was going to be able to go and I think we end up doing the whole queue line, I think. So again, these rides have huge, huge queue lines. But this was not lit up. So like I said, they'd only just open at the door. So some of the stuff might not have been turned on. Some of the posters you might recognise from different parks. But the queue configuration, I think, is slightly different here. So I think all of it's indoors. So whereas some of the lands, they go outside, like the one in Billen, for example, where you go outside and you've got like a play area in the middle. You've got all the games and everything on here, but it is all under one roof. And you've got to imagine just how big this building is. It is enormous. So this is the, uh, like the little play bit where you've got all the bricks and everything on the floor. You can carry on following the signs. You've got the little dragon area. 
Oh, that's a lie, actually. You've got the weapon area on this one rather than the dragon area. So that's another difference between them. So they've just got slight differences between the two. And that I'm just only comparing that to Billund, let alone Windsor, because, again, it's completely different to that as well. It's just nice to soak all this in and see. That hadn't been turned on. That's just like the little computer thing where you walk over with a pad and it sort of draws you in dots on the screen. You've got these really nice bits of posters and the artwork, and you can see just if... The queue line was full. How long you think you had to wait? Now there's Wu waiting for you, and all around the outside on the TV screens, it tells you how to play the game. Now don't forget, you do need to get your glasses. So you have to put your glasses on, and then you can just crack on and get going with it. So there is a box of them where you pick them up. Easy enough to get. You can see there's people behind me. That's why I'm not walking super, super slow. And then you can just pick up your glasses. You can see what you're supposed to do on those posters just there. Jump in, crack on, and enjoy yourself. It is that simple. So this is on our way to the actual ride itself, and you can see just what they're like. So the queue line is exactly the same from this bit as any of the others. The colouring's the same, the barriers are the same, everything else is the same like that, and the thing that you sit on is also exactly the same. It does look very, very effective, and obviously the Ninjago sets are obviously very very good and we're about to be taking a look at those in a second so this is the thing that you sit on i think you've got two rows of three but there's two cars so you've got the car number one car number two and there's another two that follow it after so it is a high turnaround ride but at the same time you could be stuck there for a good while so that is the ride done because obviously you can't film on the ride and i don't want to get kicked out of a different country and then you come back through, you've got all of the pictures. If you wanted to buy yourself a photo, you can do. And then you just dump the glasses off there to the right-hand side. So you just slot them back in the box, just like so. Easy enough, you've got your drop-off. And they all obviously get re-cleaned. No member of staff there because it's obviously so quiet, so you're not going to be able to get your photo. And then, as you walk down... We walk straight in to the really nice Ninjago shop. So there's some nice little sets on display, which I was surprised about just how much was on display here. Because you've got all the different sort of eras of boxes. So you've got the ones with the white around the outside. You can see you've got the brand new big one. And then you've got the smaller ones as well. You've got some of the newer sets out on display. Really clean, nice shop to have a look at. And again, the nice thing about the Ninjago stores is if you're thirsty, they do have a little fridge there. So you can pick yourself up a drink and then just treat yourself to something cold if you want to. I'm pretty sure that's what I ended up doing once I filmed all of this because I was getting so, so hot walking around this park that I needed some more bits and pieces. But again, I say this all the time, if you like your merchandise, they have got it dotted absolutely everywhere. Backpacks, hats, t-shirts, all mixed in with all of the different Lego boxes. And you can just see how they use it as a nice divide. And that's something they do do very well. They stack them up nice and high so you can see them easy enough. So you don't have to go hunting down. But obviously, when the little ones come walking through, they'll just pull on their parents' or guardian's arm. And they will want something. So the bigger sets, surprising just how many of the bigger sets they had. Bearing in mind just how big the big shop is and there are multiple stores that you can get bits and pieces from this one really was packing a punch and you can just see just the size of it because don't forget everybody that gets off the ride will walk through this store so it is perfect product placement with regards to just getting some bits and pieces and then you can just crack on and just enjoy yourself but of course they've got the exclusives there if you want them so you can see you've got the legoland exclusives just there and they obviously all of the ninjago ones but they do have others dotted around the park and they are all grouped together at the big shop at the top. Now, again, with regards to some of these sets, they are the newest ones at the time of me filming this, and it was amazing to see that they were already here, because sometimes they do take a little while to get down to this part of the parks. Now, guys, I am running out of time. I don't have that much time left. So if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Again, let us know what you think of this section of the park. Are you a fan of Ninjago? Do you buy any of the Lego sets? And have you been on any of the rides and if so what does your local Legoland Park have for the ride layout obviously we all they all have the same one that I've just been on but what does your park have 
that this one does not. Now, as we leave the shop, you can see you've got these really nice models. These look brand new because they're in different outfits. So these look like they're in the newer attire, where the ones that are out in the sun looks like they are from almost season one. So these are obviously slightly smaller, but they did look very, very good indeed. So I wonder if they're going to be making larger ones in their newer outfit, like this one, for example, because the rest of the team in that outfit are not there and of course they've got these huge dragons but i'm sure no they are in the same color i thought there's a brown then it was just a sunlight so they are all in the same color they've got this really nice gray and they have a double dragon on either side so it is a really nice little walkthrough it's a nice place just to come and just try and grab yourself a drink and just get into some shade if you need to but again i came at the perfect time because it was not rammed so i don't know how tight this would get when it's busy but with with the layout and how they sort of guide you around the outside to the different models i think it will keep the middle nice and clear so there's plenty of space to do different bits and pieces and there's always space to add in a smaller ride there as well if they ever wanted to but guys that is it i am done so if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel that'd be absolutely fantastic but as always thank you very much for watching you lot take care and we'll catch you next one Ta -da.